Hello and welcome to Football League World TV. Today we are bringing you our latest instalment of the debate show where we will be diving in on Mark Bonner's Cambridge United. To help us do that, I have Marcus Ali alongside me. Marcus, how are you getting on today? Yeah, really well. Thanks, Billy. I think the EFL always throws up these lovely storylines and maybe Mark Bonner's Cambridge United has been one of the under, more underappreciated ones this season. Definitely one of the most uh, romantic stories in the EFL in, in recent years. And I'm glad to be talking about it this morning. I think you certainly hit the nail on the head when you say underappreciated Cambridge United, a team winning promotion to League One, uh, playing League One football for the first time and, you know, third tier football for the first time in 20 years. Of course, we're streaming on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube today. So any Cambridge fans who want to send in any questions or any remarks about the season so far, then feel free to get in contact any fans of clubs in the EFL that have come across Cambridge as well, let us know your thoughts too. Um, as I say, we're streaming on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube, so make sure to get those comments in. Marcus, first of all, we'll touch on the season so far. Nine wins, nine draws, nine losses. You know, very, very steady start to proceedings in their first first year back in the third tier in a very, very long time. Absolutely, yeah. They've looked very assured. Um, going into the season, they were, unsurprisingly, uh, as the um, promoted teams always seem to be amongst the favourites to be relegated. But it did feel like there was a bit of substance in that with Cambridge United because the player they lost in, in Paul Mullen and, and the weight of goals that that, that, um, that left the Abbey, Abbey Stadium in that also there was an expectation that, that Wes Houlihan would not be as effective at uh, League One level, which has probably turned out to be the case, to be honest. Um, but the whole squad has been able to step up and, and Bonner, Bonner's coaching ability to continue improving this this group of players that was probably seen as a, a pretty average League Two squad when he, when he took on the job um, continues to, to be yeah an amazing job. Um, there was a, a period when the, they, they won just two of 13 in between uh, sort of the back end of September and late November, which did sort of start to, to concern some people and certainly... I was, I thought, maybe we saw the positive start that Morecambe had at the start of this season, who were kind of in a similar boat expectation-wise to Cambridge. Um, there was possibly a chance that they could follow them and, and fall into the relegation battle, but they've, they've had none of it. And um, they've been able to pick up wins at crucial times. I wouldn't say, well, they have picked up some, some smaller streaks. I think they're three wins on the bounce now. But they've been able to pick up wins when they needed to, just to keep themselves ticking over, keep that cushion over the relegation zone. Um, so, yeah, it's been a perfect start, really. I don't think they, they really could have hoped for any better. And speaking about League One this season, a lot has been made of the sort of increased competitiveness. And you look at Cambridge, they sort of slowed down near the end of the League Two campaign. Obviously, they lost Paul Mullen as well. And, you know, the fact that four teams go down in League One, what do you think the overall expectation was at the start of the season for Cambridge? And, you know, it's a, it's a big gulf in, in quality going from top end of, of League Two into League One. So what do you think the immediate immediate expectation was when, when promotion was confirmed? Well, if you could have offered them fifth from bottom this season, I think they all would have taken it. Um, even some of the way, the, the way that Mark Bonner was talking um, going into the season, he was more addressing the, the challenge that lay ahead of them and how difficult it was going to be rather than saying, you know, we're going to do this, this and this, we're going to ruffle some feathers and, and, and upset the odds. He, he was very aware of, of the challenge that, that presented itself. Um, even when they got promoted from League Two last season, they were kind of in and around the automatic promotion places for the majority of the campaign. But it was a case of everyone kind of waiting for when they would fall away and maybe one of the bigger clubs in League Two would, would be able to leap from a frog above them but they're able to hold on um and yeah they've, they've continued to, to exceed expectations um they're probably not quite out of it yet uh nine points above the relegation zone they're sitting pretty in 12th place but if, if there is a, a significant drop off then they could have have some fears um over their shoulders but um yeah no i think compared to the expectations they've They've overperformed um, con considering where most people were ranking them at the start of the season, maybe more than any other club in League One. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been an outstanding start and they've been able to, to put those expectations sort of on the back burner almost immediately, sort of giving themselves that platform to, to really kick on and, and solidify a spot in mid-table. 
as Marcus says, Cambridge are comfortable in mid-table at the moment, nine points above the relegation zone, 10 points from the playoff positions, a, a really good position to, to be in at the moment. Of course, a large chunk of the season still left to play. And Marcus, we'll, we'll turn our attentions solely to Mark Bonner now, um, obviously, as we've, we've been saying, doing a very good job at the moment. Fans are, are very content with him and, and the way that the club, that, that sort of the direction that the club is heading at the moment. So, in terms of Mark Bonner and what he's doing, do you think he is one of the EFL managers of the season at the moment, given, you know, the, the continued rise and the fact that he's he's come through the club and, you know, he's got that close affiliation with, with Cambridge United? 100%. Even without the, the very romantic background, which we all like to, to get behind, um, the job in isolation has been outstanding. Um, and he doesn't get talked about enough. Maybe if this was... Uh, an experienced League One, League Two manager. Uh, maybe if, if Derek Adams had stayed at Morecambe and was doing a similar job this season with them as Mark Bonner's doing with Cambridge, he would be touted for, for, for manager of the season. I have no doubt about it. Um, yeah, it's it's such a heartwarming uh, story that, um, that's that been thrown up here. Bonner starting working after having no playing career um, in, in the Cambridge United Academy in 2011, um, worked his way from the bottom to the top, started coaching with the first team in, in January 2018 and then eventually um, getting a job towards the back end of, of 2019-20 before uh, I, th I think he got a two-year deal at the start of last season. And yeah, I, I feel like his modest background, I don't think he even had a Wikipedia page at the start of last season, has contributed to um him getting less recognition for the work he's done he's only 36 um so there's a future ahead of him maybe even beyond cambridge united as well um this is clearly a man despite his background and, and lack of experience that that knows what it takes um to to, to perform on, on a small budget it has to be said as well um in league two and now he, he's he's proven himself as, as a competent league one manager coming up against some some very high profile players and managers who have who have played at, at many levels higher certainly exciting time for cambridge fans under bonner as we say it's it's uh, one of the smallest budgets in the division uh, one of the youngest managers in the division uncharted territory for him all the factors pointing towards it could be a struggle this season but that they've managed to shake that off and as we say, operating around the mid-table region in a ever-competitive League One table this year. One player that we'll, we'll specifically look at, Marcus, Joe Ironside. We, we've spoken already about Paul Mullins' absence, um, dropping down to Wrexham, scoring 32 goals in League Two last year. A very, very important source of goals. Um, Ironside did play alongside him for, for much of the season, but was sort of in Mullins' shadow in, in, in terms of goal involvements. So he, he's stepped up this season in terms of his goal involvements and all round general play and it's become sort of an integral member of the squad and a, a very good League One striker. Absolutely, yeah. Mullen and, and Houlihan took all of the credit last season while Ironside was kind of plugging away in the background. He got 14 goals. He's already got 13 in all competitions this season. But it's his all-round game, I think, that's really improved. And he's just been able to thrive on the extra responsibility that's, that's on his shoulders as, as the main man at the top of the pitch. I do see some similarities between his game and, and Carl Stockton's. I don't think he maybe has the eye for a, for a long-range shot. But in terms of the physicality and... How he he's almost brought a sense of of, of um, the evenly matched, scrappy nature of League Two into into the top half of League One, and a lot of defensive of defenses have found him very difficult to deal with. He is he is unique um, at the level. Obviously, capped that amazing day at Newcastle United, grabbing the only goal of the game. I'm sure that'll be one that um, you know Cambridge fans will remember for a very long time. He's kind of written himself into the club folklore there. Um, but yeah, it's been. A credit to, to Bonner um, for, for showing the trust in Ironside. They didn't uh, go out and, and, and bring in another man to kind of replace him and, and go straight up top uh, where Mullin was playing. Ironside has taken on the mantle in that regard and he's justified Bonner's trust completely. He's only 28, I'm sure. Um, depending on his contract situation, there might be some, some clubs a bit higher up in League One that be considering whether Joe Ironside could be a, a key contributor in their squads um, moving forward in the, in the next few years. But um, at the moment at Cambridge, he's, 
he's a crucial player and, and one that could have a, a huge say in whether they're able to secure a top half finish um, in in the coming months. And even prior to to Mullin's departure, uh, Ironside playing a key role, and the fact that Mullin did uh, sorry Mullin did depart, and you know Bonner's put all his trust in Ironside in the uh, higher division to to go out and score goals and uh, contribute in terms of his attacking play as well. So do you think that there's this trust between those two, between Bonner and Ironside, within quite a youthful side that he knows that he, he can place his trust in? in a player like Ironside to deliver, even though we're, we're talking in a high division. Yeah, I think sometimes confidence seems to affect strikers more than any other position. Um, and therefore, the relationship with the manager and that bond that's there can almost seem a little bit more crucial in that sort of player-to-manager dynamic than, than any other position. And it's clearly there with Bonner and Ironside. Um, Bonner's got the, the greatest results out of Ironside in his career to date um, and yeah he, he's the right age now with the experiences he's, he's had coming back from from non-league to, to the, right at the top of his game now to really lead that attacking contingent at Abbey Stadium and yeah I, I can only go see him going from from strength to strength in the, in the second half of the season it is a nice young squad at Cambridge they've got a few loanies a few permanent signings of, of younger players in the summer but there are players sort of approaching that second half of their career, the likes of Ironside and Harrison Dunk, of course, Houlihan at the other end of, of the spectrum as well, that are able to, to keep those younger players in, in check. And it, they are um, complementing each other really well at the moment. And yeah, Ironside is, is definitely one of the leaders in the camp. Um, and yeah, so he'll, he'll be backing himself to, to keep um, his form up and maybe will we'll definitely, in fact, have, have one eye on the 20 league goal tally uh, come the end of the season. And we mentioned there the, the youthful talent that, that uh, Bonner possesses at his disposal. And I think it's also key to mention that he does have those sort of dependable leaders as well, the likes of Houlihan, uh, Harrison Dunk, who's been with the club since their, their non-league days. So do you think this sort of level of balance is massive in, in terms of what remains of the season, keeping their head above water and also going into the future and, and having something to build upon? Yeah, definitely. They're, they've got players that, well, and plenty of them in the squad that have their best years ahead of them. So it's almost like Cambridge's success is, is breeding success and, and confident in their playing careers as well. Um, Paul Digby and, and Adam May, the two central midfielders who typically sit in front of the back four, have been so consistent this season. May's popped up with some crucial goals and assists. Um, they're just 24, Adam May, and then 26, Paul Digby. So a really good stage of their career in, in looking to progress. Um, Dimitar Mitov, the goalkeeper as well, at just 25, which is definitely younger for, for a glovesman than, than probably any other position. Obviously caught the eye um, at Newcastle, but has backed up those performances in recent weeks as well. So there's a, a, a real sense that this is the start of something at Cambridge rather than um, you know, potentially them going on to, to achieve their, their best league finish in, in some years. Um, and and the, the personnel at Bonner's disposal in the, in the squad and the profile of them suggests that they could definitely carry on uh, progressing in the years to come if they can keep hold of Bonner and these players, which, the, you know, the, the, the dynamic and, and the way that it's all getting the best out of them and they're all pulling in the same direction um, suggests that it should. So, yeah, it, Although they had a really small budget, they've done a great job of assembling a squad to, to battle in League One this season. And I for one have no concerns about them slipping into any kind of relegation battle. And directing our attention back to Bonner for a second, we've mentioned the excellent job he's done progressing through the club. And, you know, as a manager, he's got his best years ahead of him, you'd think too, as he continues to learn on job. Do you think there's scope, say, in the summer? for him to, you know, move on to a championship club? Or do you think it's premature at this stage and, you know, the, the uh, project he's building at Cambridge is too big to ignore? I can see it from both sides where his achievements are kind of undervalued. I think the championship is um, so intense at the moment that the clubs want to see ambition to get to the Premier League with pretty much every signing in terms of players and managers. And, if someone brought in Mark Bonner, I could see there being a lot of opposition to that. Um, so I, I do think 
he's a one club man um, in, in terms of being there for, for over 10 years now. So I, I think he would like to, to see the job through and see just what he can achieve um, w- with Cambridge before potentially looking at um, other avenues. Um, I, I, maybe we could see uh, he's a young manager, so the potential is definitely there. But I think there is plenty of uh, evidence that, that Cambridge can build on this season and maybe even be involved in it in a playoff push. They're only 10 points off it uh, after 27 games. So if they can continue to progress at the rate that they have been since he's been in the job, that would suggest that they're going to be a lot closer next season. Um, and given his background at the club, the way he's worked his way up, I, I don't see him jumping ship. Uh, and if he did, I would see it as a, a a bit premature, as you say. Um, the job he's done in League Two and League One, if it was at a championship club, it would probably maybe one that, that was just looking to, to stay up. Um, I'm not sure his, his League Two promotion would would uh, sort of buy him enough uh, kudos to, to get a job where a championship club that's hoping to push up the table. Um, so, yeah, I, I do think it would be a little bit premature, but there's, there's plenty of scope for him to even get there with Cambridge if they're able to, to keep this group together and, and continue to operate just as, as smartly in the transfer market and, and yeah, keep the unit and, and the good feel around the club. We've mentioned there that the, the playoffs are still intact at this stage, which must be an incredible feeling for Cambridge fans at the start of the season that, as you say, would have been hoping just to, to stay in the division. So looking at, at where they are now and their sort of form and the statistics that go with it, that they've struggled typically against the top teams in the division, winning just five points uh, in, in nine games against the top nine. Do you think that this this winning run that they're on, the confidence uh, brought on brought over from the, the victory at Newcastle, do you think that that could pave a way for them to be more competitive against those, those top teams and, and perhaps get those results that they, they've been missing so far? Definitely, yeah. I think it um, it does breathe the confidence, and I expect them to to perform better against the sides in and around the playoff places in this second half of the season because they've now got the cushion above the relegation zone to to build on it. Um, it's not like they're looking out over their shoulders going into a match um, against the top side. They can really treat it for what it's worth, um, play the occasion like they did um, at St James's Park, and and um, yeah. Bonner will be able to to get better results than he has in the first half of the season. Whether that will be enough to get them in touching distance or anything like that, um, I'm not so sure. I think, yeah, that they will be happy with their position at the moment. And if they can sustain a, a, a top half finish this season, then that will be an outstanding achievement and would, would definitely, for me, have, have Bonner thrown into the, into the mix for, for manager of the season in League One because... Yeah, given the expectations at the start of the season and looking at, at the strength of that squad and the, how the players have all seemed to have gone up, gone to a, a new level um, this season would, would definitely justify that. So I expect them to improve against the, the top sides in the second half of the season, but whether that would be enough to, to really close that gap on the playoffs, I'm, I'm not so sure. Certainly, it's as we said already, exciting time to be a Cambridge fan. You know the the, the squad they have at their disposal in, in terms of the, the platform they're building for them to progress as well. And and something else that they they can pro- uh, progress in is the FA Cup, beating Newcastle in the third round. Obviously, uh, a lot of Cambridge fans travelled that day to Newcastle, seeing their side win against their Premier League club, um, Luton Town, my club, in the next round, which will be an interesting one for them. But it's, it's another opportunity for them to progress. And, you know, the, the fact that they are um, comfortable in League One now means that they can probably put more focus into, a, a, you know, a sustained FA Cup run. Definitely. The um, the runs that they've had in these cup competitions as they were progressing in the FA Cup and the Papa John's Trophy where, where they made the quarterfinals, as I was seeing these happen, I was more worried for them that this was going to distract them and, and affect their league form. But it's gone on to have the adverse effect. It's really galvanised them. We've seen how they've been able to build on that win at Newcastle with their results in League One. So they'll be relishing the challenge of, of taking on the Hatters who also maybe provide a little bit of a, a blueprint of, of what Cambridge could achieve um, having recently, well, not in the not so uh, distant past, both coming up from the, from the National League in our Luton, pushing uh, for a top half, well, in, in the top half of, of the championship and, and Cambridge, that in League One, so a little bit further 
behind in in that kind of timeline. Um, so from from that side, it's going to be a very interesting match. But I'm sure they'll back themselves to, to cause Luton plenty of problems. And yeah, if, if they can keep their FA Cup sort of run alive, if they could get a, a big club in maybe the fifth round, that really would put the icing on the cake of what's been yeah a, a truly incredible season for Cambridge. Um, yeah, just just having the cup competitions on the side as a bonus to go with the achievements that that, that they've been able to to see in in the league um, has been outstanding and. Yeah, that is set to be a, a very intriguing fourth round tie. Yeah, as you say there, in, in terms of progressing in the cup, it, it sometimes halts the progr- uh, progress in the league. And that's something that we, we haven't associated with Cambridge this season, obviously progressing in the EFL trophy as well, uh, being edged out by, by Rotherham, who perhaps are the best team in the competition. So it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, if the FA Cup can have that much of an impact on their league form. And, you know, if they can continue uh, doing well in both, I think that's going to be quite, quite interesting for, for Cambridge fans to watch. Um, now we'll go on to the end of the season um, in what remains of this campaign. Um, we've spoken that it's only 10 points from the playoff positions, but do you still think it's a little premature to be considering them as playoff candidates or, you know, the, this... Um, sort of revitalised feeling, this good feeling around the club, it, it can really take them anywhere. Yeah, uh, whether it's too too soon to say that this season, I, I do think it is. Um, yeah, that there is there is momentum. Um, there definitely is. But 10 points is a lot at this stage. Um, and that they don't have the, the deepest squad. Um, so as the fixture congestion mounts up as it, as it usually does in, in the final months of the season. I'm not sure they'll quite be able to to stay for the course. However, if they are able to to keep themselves just inside the top half, I think that in itself represents almost, well, an amazing achievement. I think I think if Cambridge fans were told that at the start of the season, then, you know, they would have snapped your hand off for it. So uh, I think that should be the goal. Um, and playoffs, you know, if you can get yourselves in touch and distance at, at some stage, then, um, you know, be, be grateful for that. But uh, I, I do think they'll struggle. Um, I, I, the performances that we've seen in, in the last few weeks do um, have been their best of the season. I'm just not sure that they can continue um, on a longer term basis. But I think they can cause some more upsets uh, in the leagues and big clubs tracing promotion will probably trip up against the banana skin that is Cambridge United um, in the coming months. So, yeah, I think it's a little bit too soon to think they're going to be fully involved in the playoff chase impact, but definitely a secure mid-table position and potentially um, a, a, a big match and, and a chance to, to upset a championship, championship side in, in Luton in the next round of the FA Cup. Well, that is all we have time for today. A big thank you to you, Marcus, and I'm sure we'll both continue to keep a close eye on Cambridge and the progress of of Mark Bonner this season. But just a couple of things from us. Uh, Make sure to subscribe to Football League World TV. And if you've enjoyed this video today, then make sure to drop us a like. It really does help as we continue to, to grow our YouTube channel. Also on Football League World TV today, Ned Holmes is joined by Millwall fan Ryan Loftus to assess the January transfer window at the Den so far. At two o'clock, Alfie Burns will be hosting um, another debate show with Toby Wilding where they look at three players within the EFL whose future remains uncertain. And then to finish the day off, Chief Editor Sam Rourke will be joined by Ned Holmes and Chris Gallagher to give you the EFL Transfer Zone show. So make sure to tune in that. But from us for now, goodbye.